And this chapter is about the mirror modifier. The mirror modifier, as it says, allows you to mirror a bunch of vertices in order to create symmetrical objects. And usually if you're modeling a character or anything else with a symmetry axis, it's a good idea to use the mirror modifier because it can save you half the work. So let's apply a mirror modifier onto this plane. We don't see much. The reason for that is that this is already symmetrical and its pivot point is right in the middle. But watch what happens if I move this in edit mode. You can now see the plane is mirrored and it's being mirrored exactly along the X axis and the mirror axis is the Y axis going through this little orange dot here, which is the center point of my object. Let's have a look at some of the options. I can also choose to mirror along another axis. Right now, if we choose the Y axis, again, this will not be visible because this time it's still symmetrical along the Y axis, but across the X axis. So if I move it in this direction this time, you can see the mirroring going on. And the same, of course, applies for the Z axis. We have a couple of options. I want to explain the merge option last and I want to start with the clipping. I'll choose, put this back to X axis and enable the clipping options. Now I'll move this to the middle, release and move this back. You can see all the vertices that touched the Y axis. And this is only because the local Y axis is the same as the global Y axis. So if I tap out of edit mode, you can see the orange dot is exactly on the Y axis. So every vertex that touches the Y axis of your object, if you're mirroring along the X axis, will stick to the middle and you can neither pull it away from it or push it across it. So this is very handy in case you're having a more complex model and want to prevent your model from getting rips like this one. So when I'm modeling, I usually use the clipping option on, but of course, if you, for example, like this, accidentally pushed a vertex to the middle, you still can't get it back. So then you have to temporarily disable this clipping option. One thing you have to keep in mind is that the mirror option the axis here, this refers to the local axis of your object, not the global. So if I rotate my object, it's no problem because I can visualize this by choosing the orientation local of my widget here. If I now rotate this, you can see my widget has changed and it's still pointing along the local axis of my object, leaving the mirror untouched. Of course, if I reset the rotation, by pressing Alt R and then I rotate this 45 degrees and press Ctrl A to apply the rotation. Then the mirror modifier will probably do something you didn't expect. So that's something you have to keep in mind. The mirror modifier is along the local axis of the object. So let's have a look at the texture options. I'll go to the UV editing screen and I'll also delete the object that I created. I'll press seven and five to get into a orthogonal top view and I'll insert another plane. I'll also get myself another panel here and choose properties as the method that's being displayed. Now if I click on this little wrench, I can go ahead and choose another mirror modifier and I'll again drag it across the Y axis so I can see what the mirror modifier does to my object. I will then press U to unwrap and you can see now it's unwrapped perfectly onto these two arrows. I'll then choose Blender Render because with a Blender Render it's much easier to visualize textures very fast. Now, of course, you would expect the two arrows to point in opposite directions because they will get mirrored along the x-axis as well. If you want them to point into the same direction, you can basically 
unmirror the you. So you're basically mirroring the entire face and then you're mirroring the you again, which makes it unmirrored. So minus times minus is plus, double negative. Now, how do I know that u is along the x-axis? That is because the texture coordinates u and v correspond to the x-axis here and the y-axis here. So every image, of course, has an x and y-axis too, but only in two-dimensional space. So just to avoid confusion, we don't call this the image x and the image y, we'll call it the u and v. That's why this process here is also called UV unwrapping, just at the side. I can also choose to unmirror the V, but that unfortunately does not change much. In order to visualize that, I'll need another image. I'll choose this arrow here. Again, I have to select it down here, and now we can plainly see the difference. This is a perfect mirror along the y-axis as a symmetry line, whereas if I uncheck the V, then the arrow will, well, get mirrored twice. If I check both U and V, they will basically form this chain. Okay, this way you can mirror your object, but still have sort of a directional map. And it will also help you prevent an ugly scene at where the two would meet. I'll now go back into the default view and go to layer number one where I have created this very handsome little man using the skin modifier. And it has an armature, so I can move it. I will now add a mirror modifier and I will also move it to the top. So if you're using a stack of modifiers, it's usually a good idea to put the mirror modifier all the way to the top, especially if you also plan to use a subsurf modifier, because if you put the mirror below the subsurf, it can happen that you get some nasty gaps. In this case, this doesn't happen, so I'll just move the mirror fire on top of the stack so it gets calculated first. Okay, so now this little man can move its arm, but it will do some very strange deformation. Maybe you think right now that you have to apply the mirror modifier and then redistribute the vertex group. But this is not the case because this is what this vertex group checkmark does. It allows you to mirror the vertex groups and thereby using only one object or let's say one half of an object for a complete rig. In order to demonstrate I will go into edit mode with the armature and I'll then mark all these bones, uncheck this one and recheck that one and I'll press period and this will change the little pivot point here to the 3D cursor. You can see if I can switch with comma, it switches between the 3D cursor to the center point of my selection. I'll then press shift D and SX minus one, which will mirror my bones. There is no mirror modifier for an armature and usually you don't want all the bones mirrored because the ones in the middle only get one vertex group. If we have a look at the name of the bone, it's called .r.001 and that is because this bone was called .r. If I press W, I can flip the names. I think the mirroring the vertex groups only applies if you're using an armature. Maybe there are some other circumstances where it is relevant, but for me it's only if I'm using it in combination with an armature. And now you can see that we have a bone a one dot L. I only put the dot R and the dot L in behind the standard names of the bones because I was too lazy to actually rename them all. Okay, so let's have a look at the vertex groups. We have a couple of groups that don't have a dot R behind them and we have a couple of groups that do have a dot R. And again, this looks very strange. So why is my mirror modifier not mirroring the vertices? It is because I need to tell him which vertex group to actually mirror. And this is one of the parts where Blender is not that intuitive, which well is good for us because our tutorials come in handy at this point. 
if I use the armature and go out of pose mode by pressing control tab, so I'm in object mode, I can choose the mesh and shift click on the armature and then I'll press control P and choose with empty groups. The option with empty groups will not make your groups empty. It will create the groups that are not there and leave the existing groups untouched, meaning it has now created if I click on the mesh and here I can show you, it has now created all those bone.l groups and they're corresponding to the bone.r groups. And this is crucial for the mirror modifier to know which vertex group to mirror. And if I now move this bone, it works. It only moves the arm it's supposed to. Same goes for here. So this is how the mirror modifier groups work. And I have not duplicated this bone as well as this bone. So if I move them, it still gets the weird behavior. But if I move the bones I actually copied, meaning the bones that have a corresponding vertex group, by corresponding I mean one with the same name but a dot R and one with the same name and a dot L, then this armature will work fine. Let's go back to the mirror modifier option. There is one more option I haven't explained yet, which is the merge option. The merge option, of course, has to do with the merge limit because it has the same name, obviously. All right, I'll add another plane and again in edit mode, I'll push it to the side. I'll then add a mirror modifier. And if I choose the merge option, you can see even before I hit the actual symmetry axis, they those vertices will get merged. If I increase the size, at some point those vertices are so close that they fall under this limit. So meaning this limit is basically the distance from the, of a vertex from the symmetry axis in order for it to get merged at the symmetry axis. So it's getting merged with its mirrored counterpart as soon as it's close enough to the axis. And the very important part of this is, let's say we will increase this and we'll also extrude it up so it becomes a three-dimensional body. And by pressing Control 2, I can then add a subsurf modifier. Watch what happens if I uncheck the merge. The subsurf modifier will regard these two faces here. Let's actually delete those. I'll delete these two faces, X faces, and then I'll choose check back merging. Now you can see it is a seamless object except for the gap up there. But if I uncheck merge, you can see that a gap gets created and if I choose the merge option, you can see there's a little dent and the reason for that is there are there is an existing face here that's not supposed to exist. But I leave it there to emphasize the effect of the merging. Another way of demonstrating how this works is if I turn on clipping and then I'll move these vertices all the way to the middle and I'll turn off merge and apply the modifier. I can then go into edit mode and press W and remove the doubles. And you can see four vertices got removed because those were the four vertices where the mirrored side met. I will then undo this and choose merge, apply the modifier again and choose W, remove doubles and Blender has automatically already removed the doubles for us. If you don't want the center point of the object to be your symmetry axis for some reason, maybe you want to use it in an animation or there's just a situation where this doesn't allow you to be the case, you can then press Shift A and add an empty to your scene. And if you then go to the mirror object, you can choose set empty as the mirror object. And watch what happens if I move the empty. Basically the pivot point of the object is no longer where the symmetry axis is. I can use 
an arbitrary value and the value will be the exact location of the empty relative to the location of my object. If I move this along the symmetry axis, nothing happens. But if I move this along the mirror axis, I will then change the distance between my two objects. Also, if I rotate this, the mirror options will change just as if I would rotate it in edit mode with this option off. That's it about the mirror modifier and kids, please do try this at home.